Hi, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm making some super nourishing bone broth. I feel like it's just about the best thing that we can feed ourselves to nourish ourselves. And I was about to get into my yoga practice, which is super self-care. And I thought I'd practice some more self-care by making enough bone broth for the week. It's a really great way to do it. And I've been dealing with some health issues and found out I have some chronic illness. And so I really feel like it's important to let our food be our medicine. And um, this is also something quick and easy that you can eat when you're on the go, when you have kids. Um, I love feeding it to my dog. She eats raw food and this is a great way to inexpensively supplement her food and keep her from getting constipated while still giving her all those nutrients. Good for all of us, right? Um, and yeah, great way to get herbs into your diet and nourish yourself. And also if you're not feeling well, it's a great way to just have something in the fridge. You can just pour a cup out and drink it or heat it up. I love to um, put a little miso in there, maybe some extra seaweed, or it's a great soup base. So I'll make my pumpkin soup with it, vegetable soup, all kinds of things, um, break an egg in there and poach it. So lots of options with our bone broth. And if you're a vegetarian, no worries, just leave out the bones. That's all you have to do and it's vegan as well. So I'm gonna tell you my special way that I make this delicious herbal bone broth. And it has lots of foraged herbs in it. So if you're not a forager, no worries. Or if you don't have some of these herbs, no worries. Just get them from your local ethical wild crafter, order them online from them, or support your local co-op or health food store. Okay, first off, the bones. So I have this little trick that I like to use called freezer compost. So I'll take my hopefully organic locally raised chicken after I cook a whole chicken and I'll keep the bones and put them into a plastic bag in the fridge. And I'll also put my vegetable scraps in there. So things like carrot tops, kale stalks, broccoli stalks, onion peels, garlic peels are all great. And you can do that instead of adding fresh vegetables. You can still add some fresh vegetables if you want, but you don't have to. So sometimes things I might add if I'm feeling like it would be um, a few carrots cut up just coarsely. We don't have to cut anything very fine. Uh, maybe an onion quartered. We can leave the skin on because that's going to be good for our broth as well. And I might put in up to a whole head of garlic and just carefully take the head of the knife and flatten those cloves so that they break open a little bit. And again, you can keep the skins of those on as well. So some of the forage things I like to add are reishi. This is Ganoderma suge, which is from our hemlock trees. I think it's every bit as <clears throat> medicinal as uh, the reishi that you get from Asia. And here it is very abundant. So that's awesome. And I don't put a lot of this in uh, because it can make the broth bitter. So I'll put in like one big slice or a few little slices. And, um, oh, I love adding bee balm or bergamot from the garden or wild harvested. And it gives it a little bit of an oregano taste. I don't like it too strong. Um, I actually will add my more flavorful aromatic herbs after it's done when I'm making soup with it or stock or I'm um, sorry, or I'm just eating it. So um, that way it lends itself to lots of different recipes easily. But um, bee balm and bergamot, Monarda genus are super duper antimicrobial. So that's really nice. And again, they are gonna give it a little bit of oregano flavor. Some other things I like to add are nettles. You could do stinging nettles or wild wood nettles are wonderful, lots of minerals in there. And just throw in other great weedy herbs that of course you know are safe <laughs> and medicinal. 
Um, here I have some cut and sifted burdock root and that is going to be a good bitter for us to stimulate our digestion and tonic or tonify our liver. But again, you don't want to add in very much because it will make your broth bitter. And if you're serving it to people who don't like bitter very much, they're not going to want to eat it. So just a large pinch of that would be good. I also throw in peppercorns, maybe about 20 of them, and um, some turmeric root. You could also throw in some ginger. Those are wonderfully tonifying and supportive of our immune system and just great for our body in so many ways. What else did I put in there? Oh, some bay leaves that I harvested in Florida, or you can grow your own or buy them. And gosh, there's just so many options. So what would you add to your nourishing bone broth? Put it in the comments and let us know. So what are we gonna do next? Well, first I didn't mention that you actually wanna crack those bones and you can use bones from other animals as well and that will work. Um, but I have this handy dandy weapon here. <laughs> just kidding, but it could be, honestly, it's very heavy. Um, this is a meat hammer. It's usually used for tenderizing meat, but you can use this to break up your bones. I usually use this side with the kind of um, larger parts in it there, larger spikes. <laughs> I don't know what those are technically called, but yeah, and you, you can like take out your frustration, but still put good energy into your food, right? <laughs> and you really just want your bone to crack once. That is plenty. And what that will do is release the marrow. And I learned some of these tips from a great book called Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. So you can check that out. Um, but yeah, that will help release that marrow and that's good for us too. So um, we'll break up our bones. We'll put them in there with all of our other freezer compost and then fill up the water. I love to do this in my Instapot because it goes so super fast, but you can also do it um, longer in a crock pot, maybe for 12 hours or so. Uh, but in an Instapot, it only takes two hours at high pressure, which is great. You also wanna add about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and that will help extract all the good minerals for you. So I don't put any salt in there. I put that in at the end. So we're gonna cook this on high pressure for two hours if you're using an Instapot and make sure it's sealed well. Be careful, because if it's not sealed, you might get a burn from the steam. And then I just let the pressure naturally release for as long as I have. And if you don't have that long, you can quick release it. Um, but again, being careful not to get burnt. And then we can add something like parsley at the end, which will add more minerals to it. And then I will strain it. Um, I have before taken the bones and some of the broth and mixed them in my Vitamix and kept that put on the dog food as well. And so lots of good minerals and marrow in there for my pup. And, um, but mostly I just throw it into the compost and it's fine. Um, what else do you need to know about this? Yeah, I mean, basically just strain it and put it into a jar and keep it in the fridge for whenever you want a little bit. It makes a great breakfast. And again, make soup with it. What else do you love to do with your broth? What recipes do you add it to? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please like it below. Please share it with all your herb loving and foraging friends. And please subscribe to the channel so you get all of our great educational videos. All right, I am wishing you lots of great health and lots of deliciousness.